What's happening everybody? For this video, I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about Zenoscope and specifically about how they're perceived, especially from the standpoint of their covers and that being the first thing that people see when they look at a comic on the racks, on the shelves, and how their covers are kind of perceived by Cheesecake and just what that means for them, like the type of books that they do and whether that, if that's all that they have to offer or are there more to their books? So. This video is actually prompted by a comic haul, a bunch of books that I picked up the other day, which you haven't seen yet, but I'll obviously talk about a few of them here. Some Robin Hood, some Grim Fairy Tales Robin Hood books. And I read a couple of these, and this is not the first time that I delved into some Zenoscope books. I've had a few books, I think, probably gotten some free from conventions, maybe a lot of times, different publishers will have like promo books from years ago. That's just kind of how they do. Just like, hey, here's some books, check out some of our reading material, you know, whatever. A lot of, a lot of publishers do that. Standard fare for, especially for conventions. And so this couple's one, they've been around since 2005. And like I said, periodically, I will check in on them. The first books that I read from them was some Robin Hood books because she has cool design. Just this Archer, I was like, all right, you know what? Let me go check out, let me go check out some of her books like Robin Hood, Legend. Here is one of those here, Grim Fairy Tales, Robin Hood Legend. And then uh, this one as well, this is uh, Grim Fairy Tales, Wonderland, Clash of Queens. Now, Zenoscope has a bunch of properties under about, like just under the Grim Fairy Tales banner, but then I also found out that they have, or that, I don't know if they still do, but at one point they had been, like they had an imprint that dealt with like stuff from History Channel, Discovery Channel, and like all this other stuff, like Thousand Ways to Die, if anybody remembers that show, I think it was on the FX or Spike, when Spike used to be a thing. So like, I was just kind of just kind of surprised by that because I had never heard of that before and I hadn't seen those books. So I had to look up the uh, the name of that imprint again. Just some of the stuff they have, Robin Hood, Wonderland, a lot of stuff under the Wonderland banner, but then there's Cinderella, Red Riding Hood, and the Three Little Pigs at one point. So a lot of, like a wide range of fairy tale and horror stuff as well specifically fairy tale stuff which i think a lot of people dig into just kind of the twist on those classic fairy tales a lot of people grew up on that had just been just kind of floating around for you know however long but so like checking in like robin hood and the clash of queens actually i think the premise was cool it's been a while since i read that i actually probably do for a reread just to reread that but it was kind of like the idea of all uh, the face card like the club Clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. Like all of those being queens of a different land and they're after some object. I forgot what it was, but like they're all clashing, clash of queens, hence <laughs> the title. But I was like, all right, you know, it sounds kind of cool. Some of the, just the idea of those like being queens, like, oh, it kind of reminds me of the Royal Flush Gang from Batman, Batman Beyond specifically. But there was that. And then Robin Hood, again, she just has a cool design and a nice little archer. So some of the books I picked up the other day this is just from the 2014 series, so it's Robin Hood. So Robin and uh, this, lady, this other character, Marianne, she's Marianne. I think she is a witch. There's so it's there. They return from mist, and now they're back, just in the world. And like, all right, how do we? What do we do with our lives? How do we move on? And so they become PIs. So this first arc, I won't go too far into it. It's not a review, but I just kind of summarize it just because it's so fresh on my mind. But they catch on to this case and deal with other, like this other coven of witches and this drug that this priest is using to steal people's souls. And, but then he's a part of this other, like a, there's a larger conspiracy behind that. So he's kind of connected to what they call like a ball. So there's a larger thing after that. And I don't know, again, you'll see some of this, some more of the issue when I show off my haul, probably later this week, if I upload that this week. But there's that. So like I've delved into this stuff before, but I've also seen, and Zenoscope isn't the only one. I don't want to, I'm only seeing them off for the purposes of the video, but they aren't the only ones that do this. Dynamite has a representation of that, and there are several other publishers, Aspen as well. They kind of get that from around the industry and just kind of being like the cheesecake offering up. And some people, I will, I've probably said it too, but there is an element of false advertising behind it because you get these kind of wild, like they go for the cheesecake covers, like the sexy covers, and there's obviously is a big audience for that and everything sex sells we all know that we're not like a lot of us are adults we've been around the world it's 2020 a lot of people know that so you kind of see that 
but there is is there more to Zenoscope than that? It's not all cheesecake. As I said, I've dove, I wouldn't have bought more books if I thought that that's all they offered and everything inside was just garbage storytelling. It's not. But I will say that I do believe that there is an element of that because you have, and it's one thing to say, like especially with a lot of Marvel and DC books, they have like some of the top artists out there. I won't single anybody out, but just a bunch of artists out there and they're like top names for top cover artist names. And they'll push, like produce all these stunning covers and get you to like keep eyes on these books. Obviously, they want to sell, everybody wants to sell books. Publishing, you want to sell comics. Best way to do that, again, that cover is the first thing people see. If it's not like a page online, maybe Twitter, Instagram, you can see, you might see some interior, some interior panels, some like full pages before you kind of, before you see a cover that just happens like our artists will reveal the page especially if they didn't do the cover like they're just gonna reveal the page hey this is a page i just finished up on this book so you might see that first and then at some point later you see the cover but if you go into a comic shop or even uh if you're comiXology the marvel dc apps whatever else digital stores you're gonna see the cover so that's the first thing you see when you walk into a shop and you see if you have like an indie section or a xenoscope section like you're gonna see those covers and a lot of times you're gonna see Something like, I'm trying to think if I have a good example here. Probably not, none of these are really what I, oh, maybe this one. Something like this. Uh, now this one is probably on the border because I guess if you want to call it, like, and everybody's definition of cheesecake, cheesecake, beefcake, if you want to go that route, might vary. And everybody's mileage will vary as well as far as how much they can take, how much they're into. And again, I was like, I check into it just because Rap Man sounds kind of cool. I don't really dig into too much of the fairy tale stuff, but you've all, if you follow me for any amount of time, like I'm prone to just read anything at the like the drop of a dime on a whim. I pick up almost any damn book I see, like especially if I find it cheap. Like that even that's a much more incentive to just pick something up. Like all right, let me check it out. But a lot of times, like I will just a new time of day, I'll just go buy some new shit. Like whatever. Like if it just looks cool, like oh you know what? I might not know what the hell it is. But I just buy it, read it, and kind of go for it. So you have those covers, like, all right. But then there's, and again, as I was going to say before, when you have those other, like those top tier cover artists and they're doing cool books, and then you get to the interiors, there is, is there an expectation? This is the question. Is there an expectation that the book, the interiors will match up somewhat with that art? Now, when I know there are certain artists, again, I don't want to single anyone's name out because I want to make it seem like I'm just kind of shit posting and like just talking shit about people, but there are like obviously a bunch of artists because I collect a lot of their books, a lot of their art, and like I follow them, follow their careers, follow them on social media, whatever, just to kind of see the cool stuff that they do. So some books and some artists I know like, all right, that interior aren't gonna be what like match up to that, but they also aren't kind of selling the idea of like, they aren't kind of going like the sexual route, the kind of sexual, imagery that to entice people to buy their books as say Zenoscope does and Dynamite does a lot as well and there are tons of other smaller indie publishers that do that as well and that's just kind of what they become known as so what does this mean for Zenoscope and just the industry the comic book industry and there's also another question I had because I was curious like what are their print runs like like how much how many books are they printing how are they selling I don't know, and I honestly legit be curious as hell to kind of see those numbers, especially just how much of they print, like how many books are printed. We know like comic sales are whatever they are, but I don't think like the print runs are as high. Obviously, they're nowhere near as high as they used to be, but I mean, that's just kind of whatever it is. I'm okay with that. I'd be okay with publishers selling fewer books and then for books that are hot, all right, just go into later printings. And especially people that just want the stories, the collectors will, you know, go for the first print sometimes. And if the second and subsequent printings like come up rare, like collect, there are definitely a sector of the collector's market that will go after those as well. But people just want the stories. If they miss the first print, they'll go for a second, third, whatever print. Like they just won't matter to them. That's okay. Like they just want to hear this. They just want to click. They just want to read the story. So they're not going to be too bothered by that. So I just like, I was curious. I feel like, and I say this, bring all this, like produce this video, not again, not to just like, hey, they're terrible because they're not. 
they obviously produce some cool stuff because I wanted to check it out, some stuff that enticed me. But what can we do in the future? Is it all gonna be cheesecake? Are they all, is that all they offer? No. No, what can happen is, so they do produce all this stuff, Grim Fairy Tales, and again, the one, just Wonderland by itself, you will see that on a bunch of their titles over the years. So they have a lot to offer. So what can be done to, I don't know, maybe increase their status, kind of separate themselves from that. But there's also the idea of, all right, we know who our market is, we know who our audience is, and they want these books. So we're gonna continue to do this, continue to uh, like produce these sexy covers that people love to eat up. And the stories are just a way for creators to produce some stories and for some creators to get some work in, to get some, like, get some credits under their name. I don't think that's the way because, I mean, I don't think that's their approach. Not completely because nobody goes out to create a bad, I mean, very few people out there go out to create a bad product because it takes money to produce things. Like it takes money to produce, publish comic books. People have to get paid. There's a lot of time, energy, and money at work in this. So it's not a just do it for the hell of it because that would just be a waste of money, a waste of resources and people's time and energy. So what can they do? Like they can absolutely like diversify either something in the editing room and kind of branch out like, all right, we want to move past this label. And I definitely think with that, that can grow and kind of, again, separate themselves from that label and the other publishers who fall underneath that umbrella of like, all right, they're just a cheesecake company and that's, where I was ever said that before I just made that up but like just the cheesecake cover books and their stories are whatever whatever and I kind of said this on Twitter one time somebody had said something similar to like that idea and I said yeah that's Zenoscope to like an extent and I say for the like to an extent for the most part because again I've read several books I'm not just saying this just as a dude just for the hell of it for like views or just to be negative I've obviously read several of the books. This is just like a small section of books. And I picked, the, like the haul I picked up the other day is has quite a few Zenoscope, more other Zenoscope books in it. So again, this is absolutely from an experienced reader, someone who has a wide range of taste, superhero, action, spy stuff, mystery, horror, comedy, cartoon. Like I have like X-Men and Coffin Hill, Powerpuff Girls, uh, like just, that's just like range like Ghostbusters, Teenage Mutant Turtles, Batman, like like a wide range of stuff, the activity and uh Bliss. Like just I do that just for people to get a better understanding. If you're new to the channel, like you have no idea what the hell I mean read like I read so my my reading tastes are absolutely wide if you see any of my hauls, especially my pre order hauls, which I have one coming up hopefully probably early next week from my comic shop .com, you'll kind of see like my varied taste. So this is just really like, all right, what, to get people's idea, like, hey, if you have any experience reading Zenoscope tiles, what do you think of them? Are, do you see their covers? And like, what's, what are some of the thoughts that come to your mind? Have you read any, what, like what type of books have you read? Which stories have you read? Which, have you actually liked some of them? What do you think about the storytelling? Like, not just what they present, like the, the full storytelling, like so visual storytelling as well. Do you think the art is comparable to a lot of other books out there? Do, does it feel like just a bunch of pictures kind of strung together? Do you actually feel a sense of visual storytelling with that, like progression? That's some of the things that just I look for when I'm when I talk about visual storytelling and artistic storytelling. Like how are is it just does it feel like a bunch of pinups? I feel like a bunch of pictures just strung together. Or is there a flow to it? Do you kind of sense the progression from panel to panel, page to page, and like book to book as the story goes on? So again, this is just kind of gauge. I wanted like curious, always curious to see what people think about stuff like this. Cause it always, it seems like a lot of, especially YouTube is definitely heavy, obviously geared towards the big two. And that's just, I mean, that's just where it is. They've been around forever. They have these big, massive worlds that people just I clung to and absolutely love and grew up on. I'm the same way. So I just always like to spread some indie love and make sure, like get other books out there in people's minds. And like, hey, have you heard of these publisher? Have you heard of this books? Like these creators and these characters that don't get as much press and just kind of keep a discussion going. Again, not to be just completely negative, I offer this video up with some solutions and just some questions, just to get an idea of what you people think 
what everybody think in the comic book community, YouTube community at large. So uh, yeah, just share your thoughts about Zenoscope and the idea of like the cheesecake covers and their perception in the wider comic book community. Is it all bad? Have you, like, what have you heard? Do you think it can grow? Or do you think they're they're happy with their audience? Like, hey, their books are selling and they're fine with that. They're just gonna keep producing what they have because it's successful for them, whatever. Yeah, like success is kind of an eye of the beholder kind of thing. Like it's gonna be determined by the person or that company, that entity. So by whatever measurements that they kind of have set in place. But again, that's just that. So you will see a few more of these in my haul. Um, whenever I decide to drop that. But yeah, so just share your, thought, share your thoughts in the comments below. All that good stuff in the comments. So uh, yeah, happy reading, happy hunting, happy collecting. This is Gino Dragon. Thanks for watching and peace out.